Luciano Fat Louis Larasso was born on November 13, 1926 in Elizabeth, New Jersey. He would later move with his wife and children to Linden. His reputed criminal activities as listed by the FBI included union racketeering, labor extortion, gambling, and strong-arm tactics. He was a longtime organizer and business agent for Local 394, International Common Laborers and Hod Carriers Union based in Elizabeth. He also held the additional post of union trustee. In addition to his union position, he also held an active ownership interest in a Sinclair gas service station in Elizabeth, which was a popular gasoline brand decades ago. However, after the debacle of the Appalachian Mafia meeting of November 1957, in which New York State troopers raided the home of Binghamton mob boss Joseph Barbera, arresting 62 of the most prominent Mafia members in the entire United States, Larissa was dismissed from his long-held union post. But he was able to seamlessly shift gears and was soon gainfully employed again with one of the very same private construction companies his laborers' union local had previously organized the workers in. He was hired as a very well-paid labor foreman. Before I continue, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Larissa first came to the attention of law enforcement authorities when he and his family's underboss, Frank Big Frank Majuri, were detained along with the other underworld figures at Appalachian in 1957. This event would expose him to the general public and forever brand him during his lifetime. The public exposure not only forced him to resign from his union post, but it would also legally intertwine him before federal and local investigating grand juries. He would eventually be indicted on criminal conspiracy and obstruction of justice charges along with the other 61 attendees. When Larasso stood before federal judge Irving Kaufman for sentencing, the jurist gave a thumbnail sketch of the 34-year-old mafioso, as he had done for all the defendants, before passing a sentence of four years in prison on him. He called Larasso a person devoid of emotion whose first loyalty was to the underworld. It's important to note that all the defendants would eventually have their federal convictions overturned on appeal, but the years-long harassment and public exposure generated against the defendants and the Italian underworld in general resonated for decades to come. Even after he was caught on tape in discussion with Sam DiCavacante and others from a bug planted in DiCavacante's office in the 1960s, and even after he was subpoenaed to appear before the New Jersey State Commission of Investigation probing mafia activities in New Jersey in 1969, Larissa still very successfully kept his head low. Aside from his one arrest at Appalachian, Larasso had virtually no criminal record to speak of. During Sam DeCavacante's reign as boss of the Brigada, Larasso was a highly trusted key member. He had served in a capo's post and was later elevated to an underboss position so Larasso had the full confidence of Di Cavacante. In later years, as Di Cavacante semi-retired to Florida and Captain John Riggi ascended to the boss throne, Larasso was removed from the role of underboss but was still viewed as a top captain and was considered close to Riggi. In fact, it was reported that one of Riggi's sons was married to Larasso's daughter. But as time passed, it seemed Larasso's place in the family hierarchy slowly diminished. At some point, Something very negative must have happened because Larasso was apparently viewed as a threat to Riggi's power. Whether it was jealousy or fear that as a very influential and senior veteran member for over 50 years, he would attempt to overthrow Riggi, the order was given and Larasso soon disappeared. It was later learned through mob informants that Larasso was set up and indeed murdered at the order of the hierarchy and that Riggi had signed off on Larasso's execution. Luciano Fat Louis Larasso had only just turned 65 years old on the day of his disappearance in 1991. His beloved family had planned a birthday gala in his honor. When he didn't show up for his own birthday party, his family immediately knew something was very, very wrong. Unfortunately, their worst fears would soon be confirmed. Over a decade and a half would pass before the truth of what had actually happened to the longtime mafioso that fateful day back in 1991 would be exposed. Several key Di Cavacante members had turned informant, including acting boss Vincent Viniocean Palermo and soldier Anthony Capo. In their debriefing before FBI agents, their sworn testimony was documented describing Larasso's murder in all its gory details. Palermo and Capo had been among the hit team. They were, in fact, the trigger men who actually dispatched Fat Louie with multiple shots to the head and chest. 
In 2006, several members of the Di Cavalcante hierarchy, including Stefano Vitabile, Phil Abramo, Palermo and Capo, and several others, will be held accountable for his murder in a wide-ranging RICO indictment with predicates of several murders, Larasso's among them. They were all tried and convicted of murder and racketeering charges and all received life sentences. Palermo and Capo faded into Witsec, never to be seen again. Several years later, Capo was reported to have died after suffering a major heart attack. He was only in his early 40s. Palermo went on with a stellar career as a wealthy strip club owner and real estate entrepreneur in his newly relocated city of Houston, Texas. His identity would eventually be discovered and publicly reported in newspapers across the country. Four days after his identity was revealed, Palermo put his mansion up for sale. It sold for a whopping $2.85 million in 2016. After several multi-million dollar lawsuits were leveled at him by his then business partners, he reportedly made himself scarce again, becoming just another rat in the woodwork once again. As for Luciano Fat Louis Larasso, aside from his loving memory honored by his blood family, he is but a footnote in the long and bloody history of the American Mafia and is just another storied tale of Cosa Nostra. You can read more Mafia stories at Button Guys of the New York Mafia at www.thenewyorkmafia.com. And please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave us a comment. Thank you for watching. Until next time.